A black executive wins a settlement after being racially profiled by the police. Um, this guy got suspended for two years from his job over absolutely nothing. Put up the picture for a mask. This is an extreme story. The British Metropolitan Police, they have now settled a major lawsuit filed by an executive. His name is Dale, Dale Semper. Dale was falsely accused in a gun-related criminal case. He's a major executive. They accuse him of criminal conduct resulting in a two-year suspension from his job at Lloyd's Bank that paid him $90,000 a year. The settlement stems from an alleged racial profiling incident in which Dale was pulled over by the police August 2017 while driving his partner, Denise Huggin, to a nearby train station. Dale was placed in handcuffs and driven back to his house where his property was then searched causing an embarrassment seen in front of his neighbors. Officers ransacked his car and his home looking for firearms, but ultimately came up empty handed. Police also searched the homes or the, the homes of his partner and mother making matters worse when no firearms were discovered, police shifted their focus and accused Dale. He must be money laundering. Law enforcement officials then decided to contact the bank where Dale worked and told the bank, accusing him of being connected to human trafficking. It gets worse. Preliminary hearing. High Court revealed that Dale Simpter experienced significant trauma, enduring two years of stress and anxiety while being investigated for suspected involvement in gun running and other things he was never involved in. As the criminal probe unfolded over the next two years, Dale had his world turned upside down, obviously putting his career and livelihood on the line through no fault of his own. Dale explained that his bank accounts were then frozen during the investigation. It was ultimately cleared of the criminal charges in 2019. Remember, this happened in 2017. No further action was taken by the police. He was even later reinstated to his job. You, you come on back. Dale, oh, oh, Dale can come back. Dale was suspended for two years. It happened in 2017, this 2019. However, the damage was done. Uh, and his name and reputation was in ruins. Soon thereafter, Dale decided he's going to hire an attorney. He filed a $1.3 million damages claim against the Metropolitan Police. Bold move, but it worked. Because there, typically, some of these high court rules are different. But he alleged racial discrimination, false imprisonment, malicious prosecution, misfeasance, and breach of data protection. Scotland Yard announced on October 1st that it has settled the claim before Dale's lawsuit went to trial. The specifics of the settlement, including the amount paid to him, were not disclosed, part of a mutual agreement. Put up the deputy assistant commissioner. Stuart Condy confirmed the settlement in a statement, acknowledging some mishandling by police during the investigation. Quote, we stand by the necessity to act following information that was received. 
but except some elements of this case were not handled as, as well as they could have been. And we apologize for the impact that has had on the complainants, he wrote. Yeah. Um, the reality is, um, old Stewie, uh, he, he's lying. He's covering for the police because mishandling is cause and effect based on a mistake, maybe some negligence. So this guy goes from guns to money laundering to human trafficking. And there's not one iota of proof he did anything. The cops knew when they called the bank and said this, he likely is going to get his accounts frozen. This is your prerequisite. It's like a narrative to harm him because they had created a significant issue with the first mistake. And so they try to ruin him with the follow-up mistakes. Now, these aren't mistakes anymore. If the first one was even a mistake at that, now you're intentional. All right, just my hypothesis. All right, my thoughts here. You're muted, brother. Sorry, okay. Uh, I was saying I don't know the rules in England, uh, but I'm under the assumption that if you want to charge somebody, you have to have some proof, some case, Right. Before you go and get that person and arrest that person. That's why it takes so long for, you know, the FBI when they were going after the mob or some of these big cases that they bring. You got to have that evidence. And to me, it goes back to a comment I meant early, made earlier where I assume, we hope, we assume that people doing their jobs are competent, that someone who is at a level of authority is competent. I was talking to a former um, FBI counterterrorism expert who was telling me about how uh, he learned de-escalation and how because of that he never had to use his gun because he always learned how to de-escalate any kind of situation and he was saying how a lot of police uh, departments around the country in America don't have the resources to teach de-escalation to the level that they need to uh, and so similarly we're in a situation where they go after this gentleman and it feels like Keystone cops. They didn't have anything. It took two years, it takes two years. And by the way, when you approach somebody, if you know that the person is a known, let's say, um, uh, you know, killer or, or part of the cartel and, and might be dangerous and, and you're going to take them down and, and you come in ready in case there's going to be a shootout, you're ready for that situation. But this gentleman, as we found out here, he was just you know, they ransacked his car and his home and they're just looking for one thing and looking for another thing. So I'm happy he won his settlement, but too little too late, man. The guy's life was ruined for two years. Yeah, uh, and you made a great point about, you know, there has to be evidence. So instead of evidence, they just kept him under investigation and made sure everybody around him was aware he was under investigation for extreme criminal felonies.